Hi, I'm Jeff Lala, founder of the Fun and Fit Gymnastics Program and managing director of Leap Learning. And I'm happy to help Jack Rabbit out with this brief presentation on lesson planning and skill tracking. I'll give you a little bit of background about myself. Um, first of all, I've got a long-term relationship with Jack Rabbit. I've used Jack Rabbit successfully for many, many years in the gym clubs that I've run and owned. And uh, Jackrabbit's a great piece of software and I have a great relationship with the Jackrabbit team. And that's why when I took my Fun and Fit Gymnastics program teaching system and uh, made it available to others in Leap Learning, I reached out to Jackrabbit and we have a relationship now where anyone subscribed to the Fun and Fit Gymnastics program in Leap can instantly upload all of the skills and the lesson plans into their Jackrabbit account for skill tracking. And I think that's a big time saver for those people that are interested in that. Um, my background, I spent my life in gymnastics as an instructor, gymnast, coach, head coach, program director, and then eventually owner of multiple clubs. I'm also a USA Gymnastics safety instructor and a member of the USA Gymnastics University instructor team and have written courses and curriculum for USA Gymnastics in the areas of preschool and recreational gymnastics, as well as safety and business, and lectured uh, for USA Gymnastics at national and regional courses, uh, congresses, and also for Canada Gymnastics and Australia Gymnastics at their live conferences as well. So just getting into the talk here, the topics we're gonna cover include the professional duty we have in the gymnastics industry for using progressions, lesson plans, and record keeping and skill tracking. We're gonna talk about curriculums, lesson plans, and how they differ. We're gonna talk about skill tracking using the Jackrabbit portal and functionality. And um, lastly, talking about the importance of the consistency of standards um, within your organization for professionalism and how using an instructor training platform like LEAP can help establish those standards in your organization. So the first thing and most important thing is the professional duty we all have. And this is described, in fact, it's, it's the focus is on the USA Gymnastics Safety Handbook and the USA Gymnastics Risk Management courses that we must teach with progressions. Deconstructing skills into safe and achievable steps for children is not just a suggestion, it's a requirement as well as planning and organizing your lessons in advance so that you're delivering a lesson plan based on the aptitude of the children, their learning readiness, and the history they've had and the skills they've already learned so that they're only being asked to do skills that they are prepared to do safely and correctly without a struggle and without the risk of injury or minimizing the risk of injury. And lastly, maintaining teaching records. It's your professional duty to maintain teaching records, not only for the safety of the children, but for your own uh, safety and being able to dispute a claim of negligence if or when a kid gets hurt. So let's talk a little bit about that. When a child gets hurt, if it's se severe and uh, catastrophic, a lawyer is gonna sue the club, the instructor, the landlord, everybody's gonna be named in the lawsuit. And the lawyer representing the injured child is gonna to try to prove negligence. Negligence is gonna be based on the standards being violated. The standards are established in the safety handbook that USA Gymnastics prepares and that every professional instructor is required to take the safety training. So if it says in the safety handbook that you need to be following progressions, that you need to be doing lesson plans and you need to maintain teaching records, the lawyer is gonna to ask to see all of that and you need to provide and deliver your teaching records, your lesson plans and your teaching system to the attorneys who are suing you in your way of disputing negligence. An example would be a kid in your class gets up on the balance beam and does a back walkover. You ask her to do a back walkover. It's in your lesson plan. The kid falls and has a serious injury and you get sued. 
you're going to have to be able to show that you taught this kid a back walk over on the floor following all the progressions. And that after the kid had mastery of the back walk over on the floor, you had the kid do it on a line and then you had the kid do it on a low beam and that you have records that shows when these were taught in sequence and that the kid had mastery of each of those progressions and that you can then say it was appropriate for this kid to be on the high beam doing that back walk over when the kid was hurt. And that's how you defend yourself. If you don't have those teaching records, you will be found negligent because you'll be in violation of your professional duty. So that's the first thing we all need to know. It's about risk management. Now, I also know, because I've run multiple clubs, <laughs> that there are some people that struggle with lesson planning, that they want to just wing it out on the floor. They want to just teach freely and follow their gut. And number one, that's not professional. And number two, it's putting everybody at risk of liability. Someone needs to enforce these protocols in your organization. And it really helps if you have systems in place that will manage these responsibilities for you. So risk management can be easily achieved using standardized automated systems. Now you can either develop your own systems or you can adopt and employ systems that are proven that are already out there that make your life easier. So for staff training, you have a staff training system and then you have a lesson planning system and a skill tracking system. I'm going to touch on all of those briefly. So for staff training, you need to be able to provide deep and um, complete training specific to the job this instructor is going to do. So if I'm hiring somebody to teach a girls level one beginner course, I should say beginner class, I want that person to have a girls level one course that's going to cover all of the skills that are required be, to be taught at that level. So I'm going to click on LEAP here and sign into LEAP. I will then be able to go to my courses and I'll go to the, um, the girls level one uh, course. And there's a series of courses that are sequential. And if I'm hiring somebody to teach a girls beginning level one class, I'm going to make sure they take the course before they ever step out there and start teaching. So there's 36 what I would call core skills in the fun and fit gymnastics program. And this is just an example that you can use to look at and you can either develop your own similar system or employ fun and fit gymnastics in your organization. But the point is you need to have a standardized training system. So every instructor will take the training. They'll watch the videos in the course. For instance, girls level one skill one is called safe landing position. We wanna make sure every student's taught how to land safely before we begin anything else. So there's a video that kind of shows how it's to be done. And then there's questions to answer that verify comprehension is attained by the instructor. And they can have true false questions, multiple choice questions. And the point here is that when you assign a course in a learning management system, everything they watch and everything they read, they have to then verify understanding by answering questions. Now, before this existed, I used to give my staff DVDs and say, here, watch the DVD or watch a video on YouTube or whatever. And then once they tell me they watched it, I would assume they've been trained, but we all know that many of us have done that. Then they go out on the floor and you can see that they're not teaching the way the video would have told them to teach. Maybe they were distracted. Maybe they didn't understand it. With a learning management system like Lead Learning, you have verification by answering questions, having them answer the questions so that you know that they really understood. So I'm going to go back now to the, uh, the slideshow here. So the next step would be assigning courses. So I don't want to just ask them to do the course. <clears throat> I want to go into the software and assign a specific deadline of completion <clears throat> so that I know that they have maybe a week to complete their assigned courses. And I will get a notification as their employer or uh, trainer that they've completed the course, when they've completed it, how long it's taken them to complete it. And if the deadline has passed and they have not completed it, I get a notification about that as well. That's very helpful in uh, organizing your staff training that you're not having to remember uh, who's supposed to be training on what, that you put it in, you assign the course, and then you have a, 
a deadline, a software that tells you when it's completed. When they finish the course and only when they finish the course are they allowed to take the final assessment. What is a final assessment? It is 10 randomly selected questions from the course. They need to answer the questions correctly with 100% accuracy. If they don't, they can take the assessment again, but the software will give them 10 different randomly selected questions. But the bottom line is in order for somebody to complete the assessment and pass the course and earn a certificate of completion, you know that they really comprehended and understood the training. And what that does is that provides you with standards. Every instructor who's taken the course understands the same uh, terminology, the progressions, and how things are to be done. So you have a uniform way of teaching. That's professionalism as it's perceived by your clients and the students. So let's then talk about lesson planning. So the lessons need to be prepared in such a way that they go through the curriculum step by step, making sure that all of the skills in the level one course are being introduced to the students within a certain period of time. So if the kids are coming to one hour a week, maybe for each lesson, they'll go three events with a warm up and a fun finish. And then the next week, they'll go to different events. You'll repeat certain skills to make sure that they're reinforced in the learning. And then you'll also move up to more difficult skills when it's appropriate. So the Fun and Fit Gymnastics program, for instance, includes 250 sequential lesson plans, but these lessons can be edited and automated. You can also add your own skills, customize the teaching system and make a hybrid course using your own skills, your own teaching um, methods, as well as what's already in there. Or you can even have with Leap Now, you bring your own curriculum option where you get the platform and all of your teaching systems that are in binders or on DVD or on forms can all be uploaded into Leap Learning. And then you automate all of your staff training within Leap, it's a very powerful time-saving tool. So this is a sample lesson plan. And uh, the lesson always begins with a greeting where you welcome the students, you check in on them, a warm up, and uh, that would be something that raises their heart rate for, an, for instance, Cheese Mountain. If I click on Cheese Mountain, I can then go immediately into the video and see what Cheese Mountain is. And that's the cardio activity. We can go back, back to the lesson plan. I can see there's three event rotations and what these skills are, and um, then the fun finish. Now, let me talk a little bit about fun finish. You know, some of us are, because we're athletes before we become instructors, we're thinking as athletes and we think we have to do conditioning with our students. Well, if a kid's coming one hour a week to a gymnastics class, a recreational gymnastics class, five minutes of conditioning, conditioning at the end of the one hour class is a waste of time. You're not gonna be able to make an impact on their strength or flexibility five minutes a week. The best way to, to end the class is to do something really fun and exciting that the kids enjoy. And then when they leave the gym, they're thinking about that and they can't wait for the next class. And if you really wanna have an impact on their fitness level, then make sure that they're not waiting for their turn during your class. Make sure that the entire one hour you have with them once a week is constant activity where they're sweating and getting thirsty and dripping and exhausted at the end of the class. And that's the way to, to uh, make sure you have some conditioning if you don't have any conditioning at all for a one hour student. But um, the most important thing is make it fun so they look forward to coming back, right? So that's my uh, little topic there on uh, conditioning. So let's review one more time. A lesson plan has a greeting where you assess the kids, make sure they're ready to go out on the gym, physically ready in uniform, no jewelry, emotional state, look at their eyes, make sure they're ready to go out there and there, there's no issues going on there. Then you go into the warm up, you raise the heart rate, you do the, an appropriate stretch, you go to the rotations and then do your fun finish and uh, don't make it a conditioning push-ups and pull-ups and all of that, that's not fun. Talking about skill tracking, it's really important that at the end of the day when you're done teaching, you do some record keeping on who learned skills today. So Jackrabbit has a great um, skill tracking tool where you can track, I'm gonna log into Jackrabbit here, I'm gonna go into staff, gonna go into the staff portal, launch the staff portal, log in, and then this is the demo class that I'm gonna go into here. Uh, classes, manage classes, I'm gonna just pick a class here and I'm gonna go into skills. 
And this is a sample example of what I can do here. I can click on that. And for this particular child, I can check off when I introduce the skill to the kid. So they have an understanding of it. They haven't learned it yet, but I know the date that I introduced the skill, I'm going to check it off. In fact, I can check it off for every kid in that class. Update all, boom, they're all checked off. Then if a kid shows me they can do the skill correctly, the way it's described in the course, three times in a row correctly, I know they own it. They've mastered the skill. I can check it off. And then if you have any kind of record keeping system in your office, like uh, you're going to give them a star or a certificate or a ribbon, you have a place to check that off as well. So that's the skill tracking component that Jackrabbit has. And again, if you're using Jackrabbit and you're using the Fun and Fit Gymnastics program, 540 core skills that are in all the 17 courses for preschool boys and girls can be uploaded with a click into your Jackrabbit account and save you a lot of time and uh, trouble. Lastly, I'm going to close by talking a little bit about the difference between curriculum and lesson plan. A curriculum is what we teach. It's the progressions we teach and the order in which we teach them. The lesson plan is how we teach. That's taking those progressions and delivering that lesson in a fun, entertaining way. And that's up to every instructor to use your own skills, your sense of humor, themes, music. It's like the spice that you put into your recipe. So even though all of us may have the same ingredients for the recipe, each of us has our own recipe and we can personalize the way we teach to make the lessons fun and effective for the kids based on the kids that you have in your class. So if you have any questions or want any kind of help or training for your staff, I, I'm available to you as a consultant. I'd be happy to help. You can attend my lessons and my courses at USA Gymnastics uh, Congresses. Um, you can reach me personally at my own website, funandfitgymnastics.com, or you can find out more about Leap Learning at leaplearn.net. Thank you so much.